Welcome to this presentation on parts 6 through 11 of the Work Health and Safety Regulations. This follows on from another presentation on parts 1 through 5. My name is David Aaron, I'm a Senior Policy Officer with the Work Health and Safety Legislation Project Team. Chapter 6 of the Work Health and Safety Regulations covers construction work. In Western Australia's Work Health and Safety Regulations, the definition of construction project has been based on the Occupational Safety and Health Regulations, that is, where five or more people are working at the same time. This differs to the Model Work Health and Safety Regulations, which used a cost threshold of $250,000. A person conducting a business or undertaking that commissions a construction project is considered to be the principal contractor. This is similar to the main contract in the Occupational Safety and Health Regulations. Tilt-up construction work is considered to be high-risk construction, and this requires a safe work method statement to be prepared before construction commences. This provision is similar to requirements under the Occupational Safety and Health Regulations. A few other changes in relation to construction work in Western Australia's Work Health and Safety Regulations include a requirement for local government authorities to notify the regulator of any construction work permits that they've approved. This is similar to requirements in the Occupational Safety and Health Regulations, but differs to the model regulations. For excavation work, signage requirements have been replicated from the Occupational Safety and Health Regulations. The model work health and safety regulations contained a provision about signage identifying principal contractors this provision was removed in Western Australia's regulations as it duplicates requirements in other WA laws. Chapter 7 covers hazardous chemicals. A number of hazardous chemicals provisions relating to transport, storage and handling were removed from the Western Australia's Work Health and Safety regulations as they are already covered by the Dangerous Goods Safety Act 2004. For hazardous chemicals where there is a risk to workers' health, health monitoring and a health monitoring report are required. The model work health and safety regulations required the, the person conducting business or undertaking to obtain the report and to provide it to the worker and the regulator. However, in Western Australia, our work health and safety regulations require a registered medical practitioner to pr produce the report and provide it to the person conducting the business or undertaking, the worker and the regulator. This is similar to current requirements under the Occupational Safety and Health Regulations. Chapter 8 covers asbestos. Western Australia is retaining the current requirement under the Occupational Safety and Health Regulations, that is, that samples can only be analysed by a NATA-approved laboratory. As mentioned on the previous slide, Western Australia retains the current approach for health monitoring reports that are prepared by a registered medical practitioner and provided to the PCBU, the worker and the regulator. Western Australia has added a regulation which enables the regulator to direct tests in relation to the removal of asbestos at the workplace. In addition, from January 2022, there are new licensing requirements for asbestos removalists and assessors. New license applicants will require either a Class A or Class B removal license. The Class A removal license replaces the unrestricted asbestos license for dealing with friable asbestos. The Class B license replaces the restricted asbestos license for dealing with non friable asbestos. Current holders of unrestricted or restricted asbestos licences under the Occupational Safety and Health Act will need to complete a VET course by the end of December 2022. Chapter 9 covers major hazard facilities. In Western Australia, major hazard facilities are regulated under the separate Dangerous Goods Safety Act 2004. The provisions related to major hazard facilities have been removed from Chapter 9 of the WA version of the Work Health and Safety Regulations. Chapter 10 covers mines. In Western Australia, a dedicated set of Work Health and Safety Mines Regulations has been developed. Apart from authorisations, most of the general regulations are replicated in the Mines Regulations. Mining specific provisions are located in Chapter 10 of the Mines Regulations. For more information, 
please see the separate presentation on the Work Health and Safety Mines Regulations. Chapter 11 covers various general provisions. Reviewable decisions are decisions made by inspectors or the regulator under the Work Health and Safety laws that are reviewable. An example of this would be a request to review an improvement notice that has been issued by an inspector. Compared to previous laws, there are more reviewable decisions in the Work Health and Safety Act and the three sets of supporting regulations. Inspectors' decisions can be reviewed internally by the regulator, and the regulator's decisions can also be reviewed externally by the Work Health and Safety Tribunal. The regulations cover what can be reviewed, who is eligible to request a review, and whether the decision is internally or externally reviewed. Exemptions from compliance with certain regulations may be granted in certain circumstances by the regulator. If granted, these exemptions will be published on the department's website. A new requirement in relation to incident notification means that duty holders may also need to notify the Western Australian Department of Health of certain types of diseases, such as COVID-19. In addition, the regulation about inspectors' identity cards has been modified in Western Australia. Inspectors may need to request information remotely, such as during the COVID-19 pandemic. This provision enables inspectors to use alternative means of identification, such as letters on a departmental letterhead, emails or telephone. A number of transitional provisions have been developed to phase in the new work health and safety laws and to provide more time for duty holders to comply. These have been prepared in accordance with principles developed by Safe Work Australia. A link to the principles is included with this presentation. That concludes this presentation. I'd encourage you to stay up to date with the Work Health and Safety Laws and Guidance material by subscribing for our newsletters, visiting our website, Twitter or LinkedIn pages. Thank you for watching.